Hey guys, it's Sunday night. Um, originally, my plan for this weekly reading vlog was to be kind of like anticipated reads. I was gonna pick up The Midnight Library by Matt Haig because this is the last book on my 10 books to get read in 2022 list that I can actually read this year. On top of that, since Ali and Kat picked my TBR, it really worked out great that one of them picked this, so was gonna get this one read. And then also The Extraordinaries by TJ Klune, which is on my five star predictions list. And again, Ali or Kat, I can't remember, picked this one also. It would have been great if I could do that. However, found out recently that apparently on my library's Hoopla, the catalog changes month to month because I had many books marked down as there's an audiobook available on Hoopla, and now that I've gone to like try and find them this month, every single one of them has disappeared. Super annoying. Specifically, I had the audiobook for Extraordinaries because this is the chunkier one and it definitely would have been great so I could have worked through this really quickly. I can't find an audiobook for the Midnight Library anywhere so I kind of just accepted I was gonna have to read this physically. That's not the end of the world or anything but like I just knew what was gonna happen. However, I, I just don't really have faith in myself that I could read both of these books physically in their entirety this week on top of other books that I also have to get read. This is just kind of gonna be a regular weekly reading vlog. Currently, I just recently started This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amel El Mothar and Max Gladstone. I think Kat picked this one for me to read and this is kind of like a sci-fi romance story where we are following two agents on opposing sides of a time war and they write letters to one another in like very funky mediums. Like, one of them is the rings within a tree when the tree was cut in half or there's another one that's like utilizing the tea leaves in a cup of tea and there was one that was something along the lines of like flowing lava and it went down in different channels to kind of create the words it's really funky i'm really digging that layout in terms of the overall time war thing i will admit i'm kind of lost definitely purple prose everybody said that and i i get it thought that would work really well for me and i will say i do think i I am enjoying this pretty well even with that element because thankfully I tend to enjoy overly flowery writing. The chapters alternate whether they are in red or blues perspective and you kind of see wherever they are and what their mission is at this point in time. Eventually they stumble across the letter from the opposite. I think they're eventually supposed to fall in love. I'm not really sure though, but you can definitely kind of see that their relationship is definitely building towards this like weird camaraderie even though they're opposing sides of this war. It's funky. Like I am liking it. It's really short. I do have the audiobook for this one, so I've been listening to that and getting through it pretty quickly. But I will say every time I've listened to the audiobook, I do have to pay a ton of attention because of this like purple prose writing style. You kind of get lost in all the details and you don't really take in what's the important part of that section. Every time I picked it up, I'm just like totally intensely listening to it. Uh, since this is Sunday and I am also partaking in Hello Weekend Readathon this month, I currently am supposed to be working on Cackle by Rachel Harrison. Unfortunately for me, this has been the most unproductive weekend in terms of reading because I found out that I couldn't get my original book via audiobook on Hoopla, like I said previously, with that whole drama. So instead, it worked out that I did recently buy Cackle, which also could complete my prompt for this weekend, but I have to read the entirety of it physically. And I'm maybe 40 pages in and it's Sunday night, so <laughs> unfortunate. My plan tonight is to go take a shower and then just buckle down and read as much much of this as I can. Hopefully it won't impact the rest of my TBR for the week too much. I also have a different book that I'll need to read for the upcoming weekend for Halloween weekend, but I'm not 100% sure on what it's going to be yet. It definitely depends on where I am at with these two. We'll figure that out. Josh and I went to a haunted house last night. We were there until 1am and it is a hour drive back to his house, so we didn't get back until like who 15ish and I'm super super wiped still. We slept in until like 1 o'clock. I was so freaking tired and even though we spent majority of the day lazing around, I'm still really tired. <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna go take a shower and try and just get as much of cackle red as I can until I inevitably fall asleep. So happy Sunday. Let's get this reading vlog going. Hey guys, 
So I just finished updating a few different vlogs that I'm filming and uh, figured while I'm sitting here, I'll film this too. So hey, it's Monday. Um, work was, it was a day. I'll just put it like that. Anyway, um, I have made progress into This Is How You Lose the Time War. I am currently at page 126 and this is... 198 pages. So I don't necessarily know if I will finish this tonight, but I will definitely finish it tomorrow. I have actually gone through and tabbed a few things. I haven't done that today, but I did some last night. I am really enjoying this writing style. Not really surprising. Purple prose is definitely my thing. I also can totally see how fantastic this relationship is because the writing in the letters is really my favorite part. I definitely have many different moments where these two are slowly starting to fall for one another and those are a lot of my tabs. In regards to the sci-fi time war thing, I am kind of catching on. I, I'm starting to understand it a little better. I think Blue is on a side that is sort of like based around more natural things, like their overarching power is called the garden. And I think it's said that they're like grown. Not really sure about the specifics there. Where on the opposite side, red seems like she comes from more of a futuristic robotic AI sort of society. Uh, I think her boss is called the commandant. It's so funky, but at the same time, I'm very intrigued with it, but really that's that's not my main focus with the story. My main focus is the relationship between these two. It's so great seeing how they go from truly enemies and how the banter between the two of them makes it so that they initially just sort of start to like each other. Even though they do recognize one another as enemies, they also kind of can't help but continue this correspondence. It's really good. I really like that. There's actually one scene where they finally kind of do interact but it just it doesn't go the way you're expecting and that just gave me all the more faith in them starting to have more romantic feelings towards one another yeah like i don't know how to talk about this book it's also so short so like i really don't want to say anything too spoilery but i'm definitely digging it um i can totally see why a lot of people wouldn't be fans of this i i can understand this being a pretty divisive book but it's one of those where it's it's unusual but i'm i'm really into it i'm really liking it it's my thing but with sci-fi, which is not usually my thing. <laughs> On the opposite side though, I have also read a little bit more of Cackle. I am currently at page 137. So I had, didn't make a ton of progress last night, unfortunately. I just, I was getting tired and honestly just wanted to fall asleep. But with that, uh, I'm still digging this. I'm not really gonna talk about it too much in this vlog since I am gonna be reviewing it in my Hello Weekend vlog. Keep your eyes peeled for that because it comes out next week. I will say um, I'm really digging the fact that the story definitely has this very spooky feel, but also it's like Halloween towny. It's it's kind of like the X-Hex minus the romance. It's definitely more focused on this main character, sort of just finding peace with herself and finding happiness and being on her own. And I do really like that storyline. I definitely think that's something a lot of people struggle with is finding peace and just being by themselves. So I really appreciate that line of the plot, but also there's some creepy spooky things that keep happening that are pretty freaky. I wouldn't really constitute this horror though, which it has marked as on Goodreads. So intrigued to see if it gets more scary than we're currently at. Anyway, so for tonight, I'm actually gonna be hanging out on Zoom with my friends. I don't know what we're doing. We might watch a movie or we might do like productivity sprints. I'm not sure, we'll see. If we are doing productivity sprints, my goal would be to continue reading Cackle. Apart from that though, I don't have a ton of plans. I did sort of think over on whether or not I'm gonna start a different audiobook this week because apart from This Is How You Lose the Time War, the only other book on my TBR for October that I have an audiobook of is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, which I do really wanna read this this month. However, I wasn't planning on reading it for this vlog. And also I definitely was initially planning to read this physically or at least start it physically because it's a sci-fi fantasy, fairly chunky. And I think it would be better for me if I started it physically to kind of get myself in the world to understand the magic system, meet all our characters, at least start there and then maybe pick up the audiobook. But like every book I have left for the month, I have to read physically. So I might not have time to do that. <laughs> Tis a shame. So 
it's Tuesday, meaning I just got off work. I am heading over to my brother's. I am very excited because guys, it was actually cool enough today for me to wear a sweater, meaning that hopefully my brother will think it is cold enough for us to get pho. I have been craving pho or ramen four weeks now, but it has not been cold enough to really appreciate it. Now though, now it's finally here. I'm so ready. It was like 40 degrees this morning when I took Faith on a walk. So it was nice and chilly. I got to put her in her little sweater, which is really cute. Work was pretty chill today. Uh, I would say all in all, I was fairly productive. And then along with that, we have a person from our home office coming to visit tomorrow, meaning that I basically spent most of the afternoon kind of just getting prepped for him to come into the office. So mostly that just meant like cleaning off my desk and filing as much as possible. In regards to reading, I made some more progress this morning into This Is How You Lose The Time War. I am still enjoying it. Writing is still completely gorgeous. We're actually getting into some drama in regards to the plot. Like their bosses do know that Red and Blue have been in the same time and the same place a few times now, but they haven't really made the connection that they might be romantically linked possibly which in regards to their romance wow it is really beautiful I will say the writing in their letters is just so touching so impressive that these authors have managed to make me feel convinced by this romance purely in letters alone like these characters have still not really interacted in real life in person together it's it's very impressive I worked on cackle some more last night and I am really enjoying it definitely immaculate vibes and our main character Annie she meets this like witchy woman Sophie and Sophie honestly just like has the dream life that's that is who I want to be when I grow up is Sophie I did get really sucked in last night because there was some drama regarding Annie's ex-boyfriend I'm just so ready for Annie to go off on him so much so that I kind of had to text some friends this morning to just like talk my feelings out I need her to put this man in his place. I need it so badly. In regards to my whole audiobook dilemma, I think I'm kind of just going to take this as an opportunity to mood read a little bit and continue on with the Winston Brothers series. So once I finish This Is How You Lose the Time War, I'm going to start on Beard Science, which is book five in the Winston Brothers, and it is following Roscoe, who I believe is the youngest of the brothers. I think he's like roughly 21, 22. I'm not sure if there's going to be a time jump between book four and book five, but I do know his is a second chance romance with his like childhood best friend who has recently moved back to town. I want to say her name is Simone. That sounds right. Simone, something like that. We met her for a quick little moment in the fourth book, I believe. Wow, nice signal there, man. Hopefully I will finally finish Cackle here soon so that I can actually jump into some of the other books that I need to read physically. Like, it, it stresses me out so much that all of my TV right now is basically physical reads, which really isn't that bad. It's just I don't have a ton of time to read physically in my day-to-day -day life. Like, I'm so busy and I try and make time for so many people in my life. The majority of my reading really does get done via audiobook. Honestly, I just need more free time is what I'm realizing here. So that is it for now. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I will get pho tonight. I'm very excited. I really want some pho. It's been so long. So long. Oh, also, we are continuing to work through the Orville. We are on season three now, and it is so freaking good. Why is, like, every single episode in season three just an emotional punch to the gut? Like, holy crap. I think I've cried in almost every single episode thus far. And I'm pretty sure we're on episode five. That's that's really impressive. And also, how dare you, Seth MacFarlane? Like, how could you do this to me? I know the next episode revolves around Bordas' son, Topa, who there's been just very interesting discussions that take place anytime we focus on, like, Bordas' family and his culture. So I'm really intrigued about where that's possibly going to go.
Hey y'all, happy Wednesday. Um, first off, it was officially too cold today for me to take Faith on a walk in the morning. So like, it's actually fall. It's it's really nice. I got to wear my cute sweater, my fave white one. I read two chapters of Cackle this morning instead of taking Faith on a walk. And I am continuing to really enjoy this. I just really love that we're basically watching our main character of Annie just finally stop caring so much about what other people think. She's living for herself. I'm just really appreciating the overall message and vibes continue to be fantastic. I'm just so good. I also started into Dr. Strange Beard by Penny Reed. By started, I mean I'm like 20 minutes into the audiobook, but this one is following Roscoe, the youngest sibling, his best friend Simone, who they kind of, I think something happened when they were 16 and they went their separate ways. Roscoe became like kind of popular and I don't know what happened to Simone, but I think this one is kind of going the route of like a suspense thriller because one way or another, Simone is involved with the FBI and obviously Roscoe's father was the head of a motorcycle gang so that is pretty problematic. I did get spoiled on a few things in reading Beard and Hiding which is like 4.5 but thankfully I don't remember who specifically what happened which is a great thing seeing as how I'm jumping into this with hopefully fresh eyes and I might be reading this for a video. I keep going back and forth. It kind of depends on whether or not I feel this book can be read as a standalone or if you have to read all the previous books to really understand stand it. Work was pretty good today. We had the little internal audit thing which seemed to go off without a hitch which is fantastic. Uh, my boss and I ended up going to this like sort of networking event to meet a new person in the company who we will answer to slightly but also helps us. I don't know. I'm tired. It's like 8 30. We got back really late and I'm starving. The only food they had was charcuterie boards. I'm gonna eat some leftovers. I'm finally gonna finish out watching Scream which I started on Monday and then once that has happened I'm determined. I'm so determined to finish Cackle. I, I have like 80 pages left. I think if I do finish this one next I'm gonna jump into the Midnight Library because this one's also fairly short and it's also a standalone. I was trying my best to complete my TV TBR for the month, but honestly at this point I'm kind of just coming to accept the fact that chances are I'm probably not going to, meaning that if I'm gonna sacrifice any books off of my TBR, it's gonna be one of the ones starting new series. Basically either Extraordinaries or Gideon. This really sucks because I was very excited to read both of these books. I keep going back and forth on if I want to try doing like a five star reading vlog instead. Some people do five star expectation videos and then make reading vlogs to see if it lives up. I've never done one, but I'm so bad about my five star predictions that maybe that's just like what I need to do with these so I actually read them. What's really unfortunate is basically the ones I haven't read yet, almost all are the start of a series. I don't know why I did that because I've been trying my best to continue series rather than start new ones. Anyway, um, that's it for now. Like I said, I'm gonna eat dinner and watch my movie. Oh, also, I just wanted to say I watched two more episodes of The Orville yesterday with my brother and um, I'm gonna start charging Seth MacFarlane for my therapy bills because I think I cried six times yesterday. What the hell, man? Hey y'all, happy Thursday. So guess what? I officially, finally, finally finished Cackle by Rachel Harrison and I freaking loved this book. It was so good. The vibes are freaking immaculate. Like this really just put me into October, small town, New England, nice gorgeous fall weather, super crisp. Everything in this book just really jumped off the page in terms of atmosphere that like I used to describe the starless sea as like all the best things in life put together. This is like all the best things in life in fall time put together and I just was all over it. Super character driven. Very very character driven. Not a lot of plot. Kind of reminded me of Cersei or like a sort of magical realism Eleanor Oliphant. That's all I'm gonna say about it here because 
is I'm gonna do a more thorough review in my Halloween weekend vlog, which <laughs> I'm actually gonna film that update after I finish this one. Although I haven't started it yet, I am planning to pick up the Midnight Library next. I think I talked about that last night. I took the book with me to work and Josh and I kind of had like a coffee shop date because he needed to do some homework and I needed to focus on editing. We met up at a nice little coffee shop, got some drinks, chilled out for a few hours, got work done. I was hoping that maybe if I had the time I could get a little bit of reading of this in, but that didn't happen. I spent the entire time editing because I was a little behind on editing. However, I still have read a fair amount today because I hit the halfway point into Doctor Strange Beard today. I hate to say I think this might be my least favorite of the series so far. I'm just not really connecting with Roscoe as much as I have with the previous brothers. I think like the one really defining aspect of him is he just has a insanely great memory and you know he's a caring person because he's a vet and volunteers at animal shelters and stuff but I, I just don't feel like he's jumping off the page as much in comparison to his brothers. I'm very sad about that. This one's a second chance romance with his childhood best friend Simone. When they were 16 they were kind of slowly building towards actually having a romantic relationship and then something happens and he ended up ghosting her. That's that's all you know when you go into it. I'm halfway through this book and that entire issue still has not been completely explained or resolved. It's so frustrating. That's my other thing is in regards to like romantic drama this one is the most slow moving it feels also so focused on miscommunication and it's driving me crazy it definitely does have the whole suspense element going on because simone is also a fbi agent which is pretty fun and i do like that roscoe doesn't know because she's kind of working undercover, sorta. I do like Simone. She's funny. She's definitely pretty quirky. She's really smart. She does sort of have that not like other girls energy going on, but in a way where she's not hating other girls for it, she just kind of finds herself to be a weirdo for feeling or doing certain things. I'm feeling very conflicted with this book. I'm also doubly conflicted because I was thinking about using it for a video coming out next year, and now that I'm not feeling the best about it, on top of the fact that it's like the fifth book in this series. I'm not really sure if I want to do that anymore. Anyway, that is it for now. Some great news that Josh and I got today was hilariously, Josh actually won tickets for a haunted house that we actually went to last weekend. These are like 50 bucks a person tickets and he got them for free. So we're definitely going to take advantage of those and we're going to go back to that haunted house tomorrow. Thankfully, it was a pretty good one. There's actually five houses and, and all of them were well organized. Every single one of them moved pretty quickly quickly in regards to the line. Also, I think we genuinely had a scare in every single house, which is pretty impressive for us. We we do this a lot, but I did jump in every single one. Good morning. It's really weird doing an update in the morning, but I forgot I have a esthetician appointment today and it's earlier than normal. So I ended up taking the day off work, meaning I get a nice little start to the day drinking my coffee and adorable fox mug. This is like my new favorite thing ever. I use it constantly lately. Having a leftover bagel, which unfortunately they are now hitting the point where they are getting a little too hard to eat enjoyably. I did continue reading into Dr. Strange Beard last night. It's really frustrating because it keeps going back and forth between like whether I like them as a couple or not. It's just like, just, just talk to each other. If y'all would communicate, I would be so much more invested and have so much more faith in this relationship turning into something, but they won't do that. Another news, Midnight's dropped last night, so I am literally seeing nothing but Taylor Swift on all my social medias. Also, what is that book called? It it Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. I'm not a co-host, Stan. I don't really care. Midnight's and that have taken over all of my social medias. I am excited to listen to Midnight's. I just honestly forgot it was coming out, so I'll do that at some point today. I had nothing else to do right now and it seems like a missed opportunity to not take the time to film an update while I'm like in a different setting for once and, and usually not getting to relax at home and eat breakfast so.
Hey y'all, um, I think this is like a new angle. I've never really done before, at least like with the camera this high. Anyway, hi, it's a Saturday night. So Josh and I got back really late from the haunted house last night. It was very fun going again. Thankfully, it wasn't a big deal that we missed one of the houses because the both of us were pretty wiped. This time around, we actually got to see like a different show that was performing, which was like a mix between um, acrobatic stuff, probably a little contortionist, and then also uh, like fire baton twirling. It was very cool, very fun. They were called the Hell Dolls, which was really cute. Unfortunately, this time around, I did not read any of my book while waiting in line like I did last weekend. So I took this with me, <laughs> but never pulled it out. I did start into the Midnight Library yesterday. However, I got to page 27. I was enjoying this, but this definitely starts out very, very depressing, which really shouldn't be that surprising given the context of the story. It follows a woman who is attempting to commit suicide, but she ends up going to this library where every single book is a different version of her life if she had made certain choices. I, I've heard before that like it has a fantastic message but some people think it's like a little ham-fisted. I'm glad I finally have taken the time to pick this one up. I'm really hoping that I will love it a lot. I honestly don't know if I'm gonna read any more tonight or not. I haven't decided. I watched two movies with my parents, The Mummy 1 and 2, which The Mummy is like my favorite Halloween movie of all time. That whole movie is a bisexual experience, honestly. Josh and I spent most of the day today lazing around because we were wiped from yesterday and also it's just nice to kind of laze around on the weekends. We watched a little bit of Gravity Falls. We got some Korean corn dogs, which were delicious. Oh, I did listen to a little bit more of Dr. Strangebeard. I think I'm like at roughly 70% now. They have hit the point where they're being a couple, but I'm just not very invested and I'm really upset about that. I'm honestly more intrigued about the whole suspense element of the story where Simone is trying to figure out how best she can take Daryl into custody. That's really interesting and I do want to see where that's gonna go but as far as the romance goes it's just I hate how much miscommunication has been utilized in this they still have not completely discussed the original incident that made Roscoe cut her off when they were teenagers which drives me crazy and then also I understand that it's in regards to Simone working for the FBI but she's literally telling him all of these little half truths and it's so frustrating because it's like if you want me to be invested in this relationship like they need to be somewhat honest with each other and just consistent half-truths makes it feel like they're not being honest at all. They're constantly hiding something. <sighs> The smutty scenes were fine. Uh, this does have a virgin hero, which like that was interesting. I don't think I've read one of those before. Not really my cup of tea normally. Anytime virginity comes up, it just feels like it's often handled in a very uncomfortable way. Penny Reed didn't do it too much in the third book where we had a virgin heroine, but like Simone's response to Roscoe being a virgin just felt very judgmental. So seeing as how it is nearly midnight on Saturday, this is the end of this reading vlog. So I at least was able to get Cackle finished and this is how you lose the time war. This reading vlog was not nearly as productive as I would have loved for it to be, but I will say one benefit with me having hung out with Josh on Friday night is that means hopefully I can get a fair amount read tomorrow. The one caveat with that is I do have to finish editing this video for Monday. So all right, y'all. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. I have all my socials linked in the description if you're interested in keeping up with what I am reading. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Love you. Bye.